Hi, I'd like to share quickly the ways that I see Blackboard allowing us to use writing, right, to create texts throughout the semester um, in a way that lets us comprehend ideas and readings, uh, explore possible topics and strategies in arguments, and cultivate all of those texts to build academic uh, 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 final drafts that meet rubric expectations, okay? Um, and there's three things that I want to talk about, and I'm going to blast through them so that this is an interesting video. <laughs> the first one is simply how I s sequence each week. Um, I do so the same in every single week throughout the semester. There are always four content areas that students have to navigate. The first one is a topics uh, 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 module, right? That usually has some videos, but may have some other kinds of links. But this sets the tone and sets the topic for the week's discussion. The second uh, is a section focused on reading that links um, assigned reading, but also presents questions about that reading that oftentimes points back to that lecture or that module, um, but also looks forward at uh, whatever essay it is my students are writing. Um, the next content area uh, asks students to participate in a weekly discussion, oftentimes having to do with the reading and the lecture, etc. And then the final section focuses on whatever uh, paper they're writing at the moment. Okay, The purpose of this sequence, though, as I said, is so that students are constantly generating texts that allow them to move further along in their own writing process um, and into their own unique understandings and articulations of ideas, right? So the basic idea is represented here. We always start out with, with lectures or instruction from me, the professor, um, that has to do with our course SLOs um, and our, our learning objectives for that unit and then the semester. But by navigating those four content areas, students take what I present and they break it down in their own language, their own rough language. Um, and they put those in what I call a common book, but is essentially um, Blackboard's journaling tool. Okay, So more questions, screenshots of notes, um, handwritten things on the, on the side, and then you know pictures of those. All of these things end up in, in their common book. Um, they'll then use their common book um, notes and um, rearrange them so that they build paragraphs. And these paragraphs, um, um, they upload to the discussion board, right? So if this is rough writing, rough articulations, where they are the only audience to it and myself, um, this is more polished, more more developed writing, but the ideas can still be rough, just as in a classroom, right? Um, they they respond to each other, they push each other, uh, each other's ideas. Um, from here, these discussions, um, the next step is either, either a low stakes ancillary or a larger essay. But I, I ba based on those the sequencing, I encourage students to go back and again cultivate the text they've already created, repurpose them, um, and build these smaller papers than these larger papers, etc. Okay, so the writing process informs the, the sequencing um, of every single week and it also encourages and makes use of Blackboard's tools that turn just about everything we do throughout the week into some usable text along the stage of that writing process. Okay? All right, the, the second thing that really informs how I present ideas, concepts, writerly concepts to my students um, uh, is this belief in student writing, is the text that they're creating, okay, and that that I I choose to use those um, at the center of instruction, okay. So this is week three of my you know English 100 composition course. I've chosen this week <laughs> to focus on paragraph structure uh, for some idea reason that I I'm sure is uh, I'm, <laughs> I've thought about it. <laughs> Um, but I don't just give them this five-minute lecture that I've taken time, polished, I'm pretty happy with the way it is. I'm not just satisfied with that, uh, recycling that. What I do is I also create a new video for this week um, that goes back to week two's blog discussion and pulls examples of paragraphs um, to use um, as models for these ideas about paragraphing, okay? And so even though my students didn't 
weren't exposed to those concepts of paragraphing last week. I want to show them here that they're already doing those things in their writing. And so you can kind of see um, that if you clicked on this video, that my students will see their peers writing with highlights. You know, here's your topic sentence. You're already doing it. Here's your evidence. Wouldn't it be neat if this paragraph was broken apart because suddenly we realize this is a topic sentence also. Now you have two paragraphs you can push out and build farther. Okay, so student writing um, and my belief in these texts that they're creating becomes a, a centerpiece of the course um, as we go along. So we are reading uh, published um, authors, but we are also reading these texts that we are generating in Blackboard. Okay. Finally, um, the thing that I really, well, uh, a principle, right, or uh, something I've, I've come across in my experience using Blackboard um, is, is you know, I articulate it as um, um, constant invitations to participate or constant invitations to play. And the idea behind this is, is this. In the classroom, when we present our students with t a text and we ask them a provocative question about it, and they get it, they're ready right there to respond. And their responses create an energy in the classroom that invites others to, re to respond as well. And in that moment, as a whole class, we're able to dig deeper and deeper and deeper. In the classroom, I'm very confident about my ability to facilitate those kinds of dis discussions and exchanges. Less so in Blackboard because, of the, because it's synchronous, right? It's asynchronous because uh, uh, students will come in and leave and that energy is sometimes you know, d uh, lost. What I've found is that if I'm able to find a moment I think is exciting and put a link right next to it that invites them to participate, I sometimes can recapture or at least migrate, right, is the term, that energy into the online setting. So let me go and show you a quick example. Uh, this is week 10. Um, at this point in the semester, we are reading short stories. Uh, the major essay they're going to write will be an analysis of that story to find its themes, its social commentary, etc. So this week's module is, isn't a, a, a video lecture. It's a series of screens that they're going to click through, starting here, going here, ending here. And I want to show you the middle screen um, where all I do is I, they've, I've, I've given them this definition of themes. Here I'm... I'm Tying back to a, an earlier discussion we will have uh, that says, you know, themes are generated by these elements of storytelling. And so they'll watch this short clip from Little Miss Sunshine. Um, and I asked a question based on two scenes and the elements you're noticing, uh, what are the themes? In a classroom, when I show this to my students, they're ready right there because they know they can see it. So what I've done is I've added a link right below that question. Now, this link, they have no idea what it does and they have no idea that I've embedded this in a, a blog in the blog tool instead of the normal items tool or whatever it is I use. So and I've I've linked this to this create a blog entry button. So they'll watch the video, see the question, have an idea, they'll see this invitation to play, they click it, pulls up the text box, and when they're done writing their response and clicking submit, that response will end up right here below the lecture itself, right? So that by the time the third, fourth, fifth student comes in, they're reading not just me, right? And not just Little Miss Sunshine. But again, it's it's sort of simulating that in-class discussion where all of us become the source of instruction, um, um, which is kind of exciting, okay? So hopefully that, that illustrates my, the way I'm thinking about the textual environment of Blackboard and you, migrating, right, my success, my, my principles that I use in the normal classroom, the traditional classroom, sorry, uh, into the online classroom um, uh, in a way that's clear and interesting. So thank you for watching. <laughs>